there! I'm Ken. This is Canadian Retro Things. This is Shadow. She wants to know, what do you think of when I say Umi? If you're a fan of retro video games, specifically the VIC-20, possibly the Commodore 64, when I say Umi, you may think of the video game company from the 1980s. So today I'm going to be looking at that company, and I'm going to be looking at what makes their games, especially their cartridge games, a little bit odd. I happen to own one of the games, so I'm going to be looking at that one. But first, let's uh, jump onto the computer and see what we can find about this company online. This, for the two or three of you out there that watch retro channels like mine and don't know, is the Commodore VIC-20, released in North America in 1981 for $299.95 US. That's about $1,045 in today's money. It was discontinued in 1985 with almost 3 million units sold and has a game catalogue of more than 900 games that's still being added to today. Today I'm looking at one of those games, it's 1982's Meteor Run. This is one of the rarer games that I own, but that is not what I'm going to be talking to you about today. First, a little background. This game was released in 1982 by UMI, or UMI, or however you say it, which is also known as United Microware Industries. I could find almost nothing about this company online other that UMI is now a lot of things that are not a video game company. Like a Japanese restaurant, an organic vegetable farm near my house, a singer, while looking for information, I even ended up on the Uganda Management Institute website, which is a business school in Uganda. I extrapolated as much as I could from what little I could find, so please let me know in the comments anything I get blatantly wrong. The first piece of information I found is a scan of this brochure. From the title page, I can see that UMI was located at 3503C, Temple Avenue, Pomona, California. Looking on Google Maps, I can see that it is currently a financial service company. Whether or not this is the building that was there back in 1981, when I believe that UMI started, I'm not sure. This brochure has 17 games in it. Looking at some different game sites, I found that Moby Games has probably the most complete list of games that UMI either developed or released. 23 of them. They were for the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64, with some of them being ported to Atari 8-bit and the Apple II. Although looking at this list and the brochure, I found the brochure contained three games not listed on the Moby Game site. Raceway, 3D Maze, and Super Hangman. I can, however, see that all of the other games on the brochure were released in 1981 or 1982. So my guess is that the brochure is from late 1982 or early 1983, since it doesn't actually have a date on it. This brings the total of games that UMI would have been involved in to 26. Further investigation led me to the website Pixelated Arcade, which has 21 games listed. This site does have Raceway and Super Hangman listed, so that's proof that those games were actually released. There is, however, one game on this site that's not on either the brochure or Moby Games, and that is Grand Master, a chess game. That now means that the total number of games is 27. Another conclusion that I can draw from these websites is that all of the games were released between 1981 and 1984. That means that United Microware Industries was a video game company located in Pomona, California, 
from about 1981 to 1984 and released 27 games. Looking at some of the rarity charts for the VIC-20 cartridges, they all seem to agree that UMI cartridges are rare or extremely rare. This, however, does not mean that they are good. I'm guessing that they're rare because they're not widely distributed. My main reason for believing this is their tape games. Again, looking at the Pixelated Arcade website, they have images of the packages the tapes came in. Here's a couple of screenshots side by side. These shots are from Pixelated Arcade website. There's a link in the description. As you can see, the package is the same for both games. As a matter of fact, all the tape games have the same packaging. Flip them over and you can see that the individual instructions are stuffed in the back of the package. Now there's nothing wrong with this. This is a great way to save money on printing costs but it does show that there was probably not a large enough distribution of these to warrant individual packages being printed. Again, this is all speculation on my part based on what little information I could find online. And that brings us to this. This is my boxed copy of Meteor Run from UMI. So you look on the back. There's a screenshot, a little write-up about the game. You're at the helm of the flagship of the space fleet and your mission is to pilot your craft through the treacherous meteor fields surrounding the Red Star. Alder Alderbaran. Kind of sounds like Alderaan from Star Wars. Anyways, meteors are not the only hazards you face on your trek to the Red Star. It is defended by unfriendly local saucers firing photon torpedoes. Your command skill and cunning are critical, for as you get closer and closer to the Red Star, the meteors get thicker and the saucers become more aggressive. You may never reach the Red Star. As you can see, 1982. It also lists the same address that uh, we saw on the brochure. So I can hear you asking right now, what's in the box? Well, let's open it up. So we open it up and we are treated to the instructions. Um, another instruction saying that there's an error in the instructions. So rather than reprinting the uh, instructions from this page, they just printed a little one that says there's an error. No extra ship is awarded at 1500 points as indicated in the, in the instructions. So just in case anybody's interested, this game is by Roger L. Merritt. And here we have the brochure we were looking at. So, interesting, the game came with a copy of the brochure. And finally, the cartridge itself. Now, you may be thinking, this cartridge looks a little odd for a VIC-20 cartridge. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. Yes, it is definitely a little bit odd. Here it is, side by side with a Commodore released cartridge. This is Cosmic Cruncher. Can you see why this is a little bit odd and makes me question, what were they thinking when they made these cartridges? Well, how about 
if I put them like this. That's right, this one is a lot shorter or a lot thinner than this one, like uh, widthwise. So it makes it a little difficult to put it into your com or into your VIC-20. Let me just show you. Here I have my VIC-20. Now, if you're putting in a regular cartridge for your VIC-20, as you can see, it slips right in. Very little side-to-side -side movement, easy to line up with the cartridge port. Still, VIC-20s are infamous for how difficult they are to put the cartridges in. But, there you go. Putting in Meteor Run, well, look at how much room you have. So it's very difficult to just find that right spot to put this in without having to flip your computer up, kind of try and line it up, and then push it in. Now, there's the other problem. When I was pushing it in, it's very, very difficult to fit into the cartridge port here. So, that got me thinking. When they made this cartridge, did they use a thicker circuit board? Because it it's even harder than a normal VIC-20 cartridge to go into that uh, cartridge slot. So, let's take a look. 1.5 1 1.5 so no the cartridge is the same the circuit board's the same width but what about the actual cartridge itself Seventeen. Nineteen point two. That's two point two millimeters thicker than the uh, regular cartridges. How big is the opening for cartridges in the Vic Twenty? Nineteen. That means that this cartridge is actually 0.2 millimeters thicker than the opening for the VIC-20. But wait a second, maybe I've just got kind of an odd VIC-20 here. So I'll be right back. Here is my other VIC-20, one of my other VIC-20s. So let's check out the cartridge port on this one. Eighteen. That cartridge port is only 18 millimeters thick, which means on this computer, if you own this computer and you bought this cartridge, cartridge doesn't even fit into it. You would actually have to take the top off of your computer just to be able to fit the cartridge in. Now I have here my parts computer, so let's check it. Of course, it doesn't actually have any of the clips left, so there's nothing actually holding it together, so I have to do it manually. But, seventeen point nine, so about the same as that one. So that's two out of my three computers are too skinny for this cartridge without having all the clips broken and being able to do that. So that's a good possibility on why maybe this company was not a big seller. Like what exactly were they thinking when they made a cartridge that's basically thicker 
than the cartridge port the computer they're making it for. Did they even own a VIC-20 when they made these? Very, very odd anyways. So, uh, I think we'll maybe try to get this into the VIC-20 that it will actually fit into. And look at some gameplay. Where do we stand with loading this game up? Well, the first couple of times I tried putting it into this computer, there started to be a lot of groaning and cracking of the plastic that just made me uncomfortable. So I took the lid off, then tried to put it back in, and boy did I struggle trying to get this stupid thing lined up. As a matter of fact, as you can see, it was so hard to get it lined up, it even twisted the cartridge a little bit and cracked the case. And then I couldn't get it to load, and I don't know whether that's because this cartridge doesn't work or I just couldn't get it properly lined up. I do have to say, dumbest design for a cartridge ever. So, that you can see what the game is like, I got my 1541 drive emulator here, and I'm going to load it up on here. Then we're going to try playing it, and uh, yeah, then we can uh, decide how good of a game it actually is and whether it was worth all this trouble. I got my VIC-20 hooked up. Now to play this game I'm going to need an 8K expansion, so I've got my Penultimate Plus cartridge in there. So we'll set it to 8K RAM, find the proper file, and load it up. Oh, there we go, Meteor Run, looks a little off-center to me, but... Might just be the copy of it that I have here. Oh, yeah, definitely off-center. Oh, well. Still can play it. So as you can see, it's kind of like a Defender game. It was described as being like Defender and Asteroids. So you got Asteroids flying at you, you got Aliens flying at you. Honestly, Aliens that look like they're taken directly from Defender. And asteroids to shoot. You got a little radar at the top too, so you can see what you're doing. Or see what's coming at you anyway. Fairly small hitboxes on this game. Especially for the asteroids. I mean, visually, it's not a bad game. Very big, chunky sprites on it. Actually, can't hear the sound that's being recorded right now, so I don't know what the sound is like. Maybe I'll add something in at the end of the video to let you know what I thought of the sound after I've heard it. Interesting, they can shoot themselves. That one just ran into his own bullet. And if they hit asteroids, they die for the aliens, that is. So everything kills everybody on this game. It's a playable game. I wouldn't say it's a great game, but definitely a playable game. Um, yeah, I mean, I have it on my Pi 1541 drive there, so I don't really have to worry about getting that cartridge working. So, that is Meteor Run by UMI, UMI, or however you pronounce it. 
And that is a little history on UMI, at least whatever I could piece together by looking through various websites, and a look at the one game of theirs, Meteor Run, that I actually own. Very, very odd that they're a company that created cartridges for a system that the cartridges didn't properly fit into. That is just, I don't know if there was any money savings there to make the cartridge the wrong size, but I mean, it should have been skinnier and it should have been wider. Anyways, uh, who knows what they were thinking. But uh, for Meteor Run, what did I think of the sound? Fairly basic sound and the gameplay was very repetitive and just not a great version of Defender. As a matter of fact, if you're going to play a game like that, pick the Atari Soft version of Defender right here because it's way better from 1983 and uh, it's actually a really, really good version on the VIC-20. All right, well, what am I going to do with this cartridge? Well, it is going to go up onto my shelf and be just part of my collection. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget that a like, a subscribe, and a comment below are all things that help the channel out a lot and are greatly appreciated. But until next time, see ya.